Amen. And we say yes. We say yes because you are the God of miracles. You are the God of wonders. You are the God of power. And we praise you that you are God and we are not. We thank you, God, that through you and through the risen Christ, we still live in the days of miracles. And we still live in the days of holy wonder. And we still live in the days where we have a God who is a God of power. And so we say yes, and we praise you, and we pray, God, that you would draw us close to you, that we might live your love in this world. And God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart will be in alignment with your purpose of love in this world. Amen. Matthew 6.33 says, Seek God first and the ways of God, and you'll have everything. That's a scripture that oftentimes stands in contrast to the cultures around us. The cultures which say, seek wealth first, and you'll have everything. Or messages that say, seek this product first, and you'll have everything. All these little gods really sell us false life and false nourishment. We live in a world where there are so many little gods, and one of the main little gods is the god of information. Information is highly valued in our world, and in many ways it should be. It's a good thing. We need good science. We need good ideas. We need information technology. And all that is wonderful, except when we put it very first. Because information without wisdom, in fact, can be harmful. Information alone does not have integrity. We've seen that recently with one of the information shows that many of us love, Jeopardy. Despite all the knowledge that the contestants and the directors and the producers of Jeopardy have, there's a major integrity crisis going on with that game show. It shows that information by itself is not enough. In many ways, you could say that we live in a time of information overload and wisdom underload. We live in a time of dangerous misinformation, in fact, that is costing lives, as we've seen with all the misinformation about vaccines. It seems that despite all the information coming from so many directions, information at the click of a finger on our iPhones, that common sense has been misplaced. Some are saying, where did I put my phone? <laughs> well, the better question is, where did I put my common sense? <laughs> Essential wisdom has been lost in so many ways. And intuition... There's something powerful about intuition, and yet the mystery of intuition has been traded for superficial sound bites. It's easy to feel decentered in the confusion of spin and propaganda and assumptions. One of my dreams is for the State of the Union address to happen and for the Supreme Court to be there and people from both parties and all these national leaders and for someone to somehow step into that room and offer the scripture today from James 3.13, which is just a very simple yet pointed question. I would love for someone to be on Capitol Hill and to stand in that room and to say, who is wise and understanding among you? In my imagining of this vision... <laughs> the place would absolutely be stunned in silence. Who is wise and understanding among you? I think that's one of the most important questions that we can ask as our world seems to be falling apart around us. 
Yes, we need information. And even more so, we need wisdom. And thinking about that question, who is wise and understanding among you, I'd invite you now just to take a moment to think of some of the wise people in your life. Ask the Spirit to bring those to mind. I think of my grandmother who could always just cut right to the heart of any issue. West Texas uh, did not have the opportunity to finish high school, but I one time heard her in a conversation with a surgeon ask some questions that got right to the heart of the heart of the heart. So I've invited my grandmother to stand with me today for this message. Invite some of the wise ones in your life to come and sit with you today or to be with you. And as we proceed, think about these people of wisdom. Who is wise and understanding among you? Our scriptures today both speak of the importance of wisdom and the call to practice wisdom. They both offer positive and negative examples of wisdom. Psalm 1 offers caution and it describes anti-wisdom as wisdom or actually advice that is driven by ego, control, and entitlement. The invitation of wisdom as described in Psalm 1 is to be like trees planted by streams of water. So the positive image is the image of a tree. A tree has roots that go deep and branches that go wide. And it offers nourishment to be freely shared. So part of what's coming through here in this messaging is that wisdom is very much aligned with nourishment. Wisdom somehow feeds. Information can be useful, but it doesn't necessarily nourish. The invitation of wisdom is to offer nourishment that's freely shared. Then our scripture from James, that question, who is wise and understanding among you, also gives us a picture of anti-wisdom as well as a picture of true wisdom. Now this scripture was written to some churches that were in exile. They did not have a central location. In some ways you could say this was a refugee community that was receiving this messaging. They were a hurting community, and lots of crazy things were going on in the community. There was lots of upheaval and lots of uh, disruption, lots of turmoil. And so the writer is very, very clear here about all that's going on and isn't overly organized in their thinking, and yet they offer a lot of information and a lot of wisdom about what wisdom is and what it's not. Wisdom is not bitter envy, selfish ambition boasting, false to the truth, unspiritual, dangerous. Anti-wisdom is where there is envy and selfish ambition, which leads to disorder and destruction. I looked at this and I thought, wow, what a description. This describes a lot of what we're seeing today and the destruction and the disorder. And then goes on to describe wisdom as character. This wisdom is gentleness. This wisdom is peaceable, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits. Fruits, another nourishing word, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy, and a harvest of integrity. I love the words fruit and harvest in association with wisdom. Integrity, character, this is the invitation of wisdom. So our call as individuals and a community is for us to be able to embody that question of who is wise and understanding among you. My prayer is that we as individuals would grow in wisdom and that we as a community would be a wise and understanding church. Now the thing about this is, it's not like you can just gain wisdom like you're studying for a test. You you can't cram for wisdom. Wisdom is actually a daily and a lifelong practice. So I'd like to offer some very specific concrete ways that we can apply to our own lives to deepen the practice of wisdom as individuals and as beloved community. 
So here's some concrete ways. First of all, open yourself to wisdom and, and just take it in. There are some wonderful sources of wisdom that can instruct our minds as well as our hearts. The sacred scriptures from Genesis to Revelation have the abiding theme of love and covenant. And yet undergirding that all the way through the Bible is the theme of wisdom. So we invite you to read the scriptures and other sacred texts, others who have lived lives of wisdom and tell their stories of wisdom. One way to approach this is as you begin to, to read sacred text, first of all, open yourself to God's presence. And then ask God to speak to you through what you're experiencing. And then ask God to show you God's self. Proverbs 4.22 on Scripture says, Scriptures are life to those who find them. So open, read, prepare. Do it every day in some way. I know some folks who collect quotes, takes wisdom and puts it in a bite-sized way to receive it. Whatever works for you, take in wisdom. The next thing is to really be aware of the messaging around us. Wisdom is to be very aware of the influences of the cultures around us. On YouTube, you have what are called influencers. And if you look at their YouTube videos, you'll see that these influencers are not grounded necessarily in wisdom. Most of them, in fact, are trying to sell something. It's important to realize that much of the messaging around us is catering to materialism. So be aware of this, the influencers telling us what to eat, what to drive, where to put our focus. It is easy to lose our true selves in all these messages that influence us. So think of wisdom as our inner influencer. Wisdom filters outer influences and it counters outer influences. The third thing is to simply ask for wisdom. And we see that again modeled throughout scripture, to pray for wisdom. One invitation is to create a wisdom prayer list. The top of it, just put, where do I need wisdom? And then list decisions where you need wisdom. And then on that same sheet of paper, list relationships where you need wisdom. And then take a moment to consider your character and where you need wisdom. And then ask God to show you your strengths and your weaknesses and seek God's wisdom to navigate these realities. And then all of us face a variety of situations, so list situations that need wisdom. And then the invitation is to review that prayer list every night and just to release it to the Spirit. One of the things about night is that we're sleeping and so we're not trying to control everything we're thinking. While we're sleeping, it's a wonderful opportunity for the Holy Spirit to work. And in fact, Psalm 16, 7 says, I will praise my God who counsels me even at night. My heart instructs me. Oftentimes when we're working for wisdom and seeking wisdom, we will wake with the wisdom that we need. And then the next thing is to take a wisdom pause. Sometimes life is just going crazy and we don't even slow down enough to think, much less to pray or to seek wisdom. So make it a practice when things start going out of control or you're facing conflict to take a wisdom pause. This works very well, particularly in organizations that are facing conflict or challenge. When I was pastoring at Resurrection MCC in Houston, Texas, we had purchased a new building and we're doing some redesign. We interviewed a lot of architects. We had a team of 12 people working on this project. We got down to the final two architects. Both of them were wonderful. We discussed various strengths and what these architects would bring to the table and we voted. And the vote was six, six. So we discussed some more and we talked some more and we voted again, six, six. Now, now things weren't getting ugly or anything. We were respecting each other, but we'd come to an impasse. What were we going to do? Well, this inner voice said, take 10 minutes, step away from the table, and just invite everyone to share some silence, to take a pause, and to seek wisdom. We stepped away from the table. We took 10 minutes. 
came back without any further discussion. We simply voted. And the vote was unanimous for one of the architects. I believe in the power of wisdom. And oftentimes silence is the foundation for that. We seek to practice wisdom as a board of directors here at MCCDC. One thing we do at the beginning of every meeting is we light a candle. That candle symbolizes a number of things. It, it symbolizes our faith. It symbolizes what makes us different from other nonprofits. It symbolizes every individual in the congregation. It's our faith. And it's also a prayer reminder that if at any point in the meeting, any board member can say, can we just stop and pray? There have been a number of times where we've just kind of lost where we're going and we get a little confused or there's a little tension in the space and someone has simply said, may we pray? And that moment has brought us back as a board of directors and as a community. Individual and collective wisdom. It will guide us and lead us through life and most of all, it will help us to nourish others through the harvest and through the fruits. A quick recap. Concrete ways to deepen the practice of wisdom as individuals and community. Take wisdom in. Be aware of the influences around us. Then ask for wisdom. And then take a wisdom break. Our God supplies every need, including our need for wisdom to live strong and true lives. Seek God first and the ways of God, and you'll have everything. Amen? Amen.